Good evening. I am Dr. Sandra Cato, your moderator for this evening's forum. On behalf of the NAACP of Champaign County and the League of Women Voters of Champaign County, I welcome you to tonight's candidate forum for the Democratic candidates in the 20, in the, excuse me, February 26th primary election for the offices of mayor and clerk for the city of Urbana. The candidates for mayor of Urbana are Laurel Pressing and Leslie Stratton. The candidates for Urbana City Clerk are Michael Gatchi and Phyllis Clark. Each candidate will be given two minutes for an opening statement. I will then ask questions submitted by the audience and candidates will each have one minute to answer these questions. At the end, each candidate will have two minutes for a closing statement. For you in the audience, there are people distributing and collecting cards for your questions. Shall we begin? By an early draw, uh, Ms. Uh, Pressing will begin, and we will begin with her opening statement. First, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters and the NAACP for hosting this debate. Um, for my qualifications, my experience as an economist in business forecasting and my background in government budgeting give me a long-range perspective and the ability to solve problems after others have given up. In the midst of a great recession, we cut crime 25 percent using a team approach and all tools available to the city and creating new tools as needed. We kept our employees on the job while other cities sl slashed fire and police. I never gave up until we saved the Police Training Institute. We used $1.6 million in public investment to leverage $5.3 million in private investment just downtown, including $2.5 million for Common Grounds Food Co-op, that's their private investment, $2 million to restore the Urbana of the historic Urbana Hotel, again, private investment, and three quarters of a million dollars to renovate Main Street buildings for a new restaurant and creative space. We've brought dozens of new businesses to Urbana and will spend $5 million more on street work this year, all while carefully balancing the city budget. Urbana continues to attract new businesses to every commercial area of the city. Most of the space at the Pines is now filled. A new Rulers Grocery is moving into the former Jerry's IGA on Philo Road. Gateway Shops at Five Points has all new businesses. North of I-74, Soccer Planet is a highly su successful new business, and Michelle's Bridal, which started in Urbana, has become a regional retailer. As mayor, I'm glad to be part of Urbana's honest, effective government with its very active public participation. We're committed to respect and fairness for all people. We continue to invest for the future, making this city a great place to live, work, and do business. Thank you, Ms. Pressing. Sorry. Good evening. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters and the NAACP for having us at this forum tonight. This is a real service to the public as there are many important issues that the Urbana voters should consider before they vote in this election. Before I get into my issues, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of this community and I grew up in a family that's dedicated to public service. Many of you are familiar with the Stratton Elementary School in Champaign, and you know that it was named after my father, who was a well-known educator in our community. Not only was he an educator and an administrator in our local schools for 30 years, but he fought for integration in our schools and businesses. He was the first, he was one of the first African Americans to serve on the Champaign City Council when he was elected in 1961 as the first African American at large. For most of my professional career, I worked at the City of Urbana in the Public Works Department. I started out as a laborer, but spent many years as an emergency responder and operations technician. Uh, I was also president of Ask Me Local 1331 for eight years and was on the contract negotiating team during that time. I rose through the ranks 
to become the first, one of the first African American managers in the Urbana Public Works Department. As a manager, I had duties that included uh, budget preparation and personal management, among others. I'm running for mayor because the current administration has been ineffective in moving the city forward in a way that our residents would like to see. We see our transportation and development funds being wasted on projects like the Boneyard Mini Park where five million dollars of development is being used to beautify a short stretch of the Boneyard. Without any commitment from adjacent property owners to develop nearby, we see millions being spent on a road that is completely outside the city limits while the roads we drive on every day are crumbling. We see broken promises of the landmark hotel project where current administration promised to complete the renovation of the property that is all 128 rooms, the conference center and the restaurant. Excuse me. But Thank you, candidate Stratton. I'm sorry, your two minutes have been exhausted. Thank you. Ms. Prasing. What are three most pressing issues facing the city, and how do you intend to address them? Well, the biggest issue is the finances, because we've been through uh, a huge recession, but we seem to have been able to cope with that. It all depends on how, you know, if we go slipping down in another recession, or if the state of Illinois decides to cut money to local government, we could be in a really big problem. Um, but we've been able to cope very well. We have new businesses coming to Urbana in the middle of a recession, and uh, we think that our assessed valuation on existing property will come back again. It d mm -hmm. did decline, but I think, um, I think we're coping very well. So uh, you want three things. Hmm. Well, I gave you two. Correct. You still have a few more seconds. Well. I mean, I think the, the big thing is um, finances, as I said, but um, we have labor negotiations coming up, and sometimes that gets to be difficult, but we try to be very honest with our employees, and we get, we've gotten good cooperation in the past. Thank you. Mr. Stratton? I see the three most important things as being crime, economic development, and as the mayor said, finance. Uh, on the finance situation, uh, the current administration is borrowing money um, from insurance, uh, from, uh, well, our insurance program right now is down a million dollars from what it was when uh, the current administration started. Uh, we need to work on the crime in the southeast Urbana area. Uh, in order to do that, we need to develop our community policing. And these issues, uh, along with uh, economic development, uh, which is the downtown area, and centralizing our finances to uh, develop the downtown area, is, are the most important issues for this campaign year. Thank you. Mr. Stratton. Do you have any plans to provide for more affordable housing for low-income people? I would like to see some of the open spaces, perhaps in the downtown area, developed for uh, low income. There are rooms for uh, some medium-sized buildings, in particularly the Timponi lot, the, the Denny's lot, the Goodyear lot; those are places uh, that would put uh, that would put our citizens in the area of town. That it would be uh, that would be good for that type of housing. Thank you, Ms. Preston. Um, that area is uh, for commercial development, and we do have plans to reconstruct uh, housing when we tear down Urbana townhomes, which was a big apartment complex that became crime ridden. So the city was uh, given that um, property by a German bank. They paid all the taxes and everything. We're going to pay for tearing it down, but the value of the land is worth more than the cost of tearing it down. And I think the people in the neighborhood would like to see 
uh, lower density in that area. And I think we're going to have to do that in some other parts of the city, too. We have community development funds that are used for low-income housing, and we've had some successful developments with that. Uh, the problem is that the federal government seems to be cutting those funds, and that creates difficulties for the city. But I know that housing is a big problem uh, when you see that children in Head Start um, keep switching in and out. I think that's because of the instability of the family. Thank you. Ms. Pressing. How will you address the problem of crime in Urbana, particularly in the Learman neighborhoods and the Philo Road Silver Vaunter area? Well, Urbana has used uh, community policing for many years. The first community policing officer was Anthony Cobb, who is now the police chief in Champaign. And as I said, we've cut crime 25 percent across the city. And when we started um, condemning the units at Urbana townhomes, the crime went down dramatically. That had been the high, the high crime area in the city. And our police department works very closely with the fire department and the building inspectors. And we, took, we uh, really cracked down on slum landlords. We took a, a landlord to court um, yesterday uh, for criminal property management. And so we're, we're going to have to redevelop the area in southeast Urbana just the way we're going to do Learman Avenue. Thank you. Mr. Stratton? My suggestion is to put more police on the street. I believe that uh, possibly even locating police down in the area on a regular basis is the way to go. Uh, looking through the budget, we've come across uh, $380,000 in overtime for the fire department. Uh, well, that $380,000 uh, in a 24-hour organization seems to be a bit high. I would see capping that at something close to what the police department is currently getting, around 180000 and using the balance to put additional police officers on the street. Thank you, Mr. Stratton. Again, Mr. Stratton, what two major changes do you see coming to Urbana in the next two years, and how will you deal with them if you are mayor? The changes that I, antici the changes that I anticipate will be growth. I anticipate that we will be able to attract people. Uh, we're going to put out RFPs on all four of the major, major piece of parcels around town, uh, particularly to the Grummish, the, the, Good, uh, the Goodyear, the uh, Denny's, uh, I can't think of the name of the last one, but anyway, uh, we would put out RFPs on those and that would be one of the things. The other thing would be uh, a reduction in crime because I, that would be the first thing on my plate to make sure that the crime in Southeast Urbana is addressed and addressed immediately. Thank you. Ms. Pressing, do you support the Boneyard Project? Why or why not? I support the Boneyard Project because um, beautification of a stream like that is something that many cities have tried, and it seems to bring in very high quality development. Did I, did I not get a chance to answer the last question? Is that what you're talking about? Did I she? thought maybe there was a lapse there. I'm sorry. OK. But what was the last question? I'll go back to that. What two major changes do you see coming to Urbana in the next two years? And how will you deal with them if you are mayor? My, my apologies. OK. Um, we have a huge problem with poverty that all American cities are having to deal with. And I think the solution to that is more early education for young children and then dealing with the families, helping them with housing and with employment. So the projects that we are uh, developing now, Olympian Drive to open up Lincoln Avenue so we can have more jobs, 
and um, the boneyard development which is going to to be a big boost to downtown those kinds of developments have proved very um, productive in other cities and so those are the things that we have to deal with we will continue to lower crime in Urbana we have an excellent police department and now that we have the police training institute um, saved they have a good place to go to keep their training up and many of our officers teach at that school as well so um, those are the main issues that I could see that we'll, we'll be dealing with. Thank you. And so then what was the next the question? The next question, uh, Ms. Pressing, do you support the Boneyard Project? Why or why not? Well, the Boneyard Project came out of a huge public discussion lasting a number of years, and it incorporates what the public said they wanted to do and uh, beautification of a waterway is a proven technique for getting economic development. Uh, it, as part of that project, we're also improving uh, Race Street, we're doing a new bridge over the Boneyard, and we're doing uh, Broadway Avenue as well. So that's gonna be a wonderful development for the downtown, and if you've been to other cities like um, San Antonio or Champaign, Illinois, <laughs> You know, we don't want Urbana to be the only one that has the ugly part of the boneyard when Champaign has beautified it and the university has beautified it too. So I think it'll be a tremendous asset, not only for commerce, but just for uh, enjoyment of the public. Thank you. M Mr. Stratton, do you? The project in itself is okay. okay. However, $5 million spent on one spot in a town our size is a huge amount. We need to look at what we spend and how we spend it. Uh, we don't have any commitment from any of the property owners along the Boneyard to uh, do anything for their properties, develop their properties, develop anything along the Boneyard. Uh, this is TIF money. TIF money is used to, for economic development. Economic development in Urbana would be to fill in the lots, fill in the, the open spaces, develop the areas where we can get more businesses. Uh, we could also take the same money and develop the businesses in Urbana. Uh, we need to help our businesses to expand when they're ready. Thank you. Mr. Stratton, do you believe that giving tax breaks to corporate franchises is a way to attract new business to Urbana, and would that be fair to regular citizens who are required to pay all of their taxes? Tax breaks, as I see them, um, you need to pick and choose where you do that. It, it needs to be, if you're giving a tax break to a corporation, then it needs to be a corporation that's going to provide num a number of jobs. It can't be uh, someone who's going to take a tax break and go in and uh, have their business open for a year and close up and, and walk away. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we're going to give money, if we're going to give a tax break to a business, the business needs to be uh, stable and planning on staying in Urbana. Uh, I noticed that the state of Illinois gave a tax break to the Sears, but Sears assess, essentially says they're closing. And so they took our tax break and they walked with it. That's not what I'm looking for. Okay, thank you. Did you Urbana gives um, tax incentives and we are very careful about seeing what the return is going to be. And um, so far we've been very successful. I think we've leveraged small amounts of taxes um, to get large private investments. Um, in the downtown, we're gonna have a redevelopment of some buildings on Main Street. We're investing $70,000 in order to get $750,000 in private investment. And I think that is a very wise use of, of tax money. We certainly want to get the most for the money and 
Um, employment is going to be the key issue in the future. We've had a shrinking of middle class jobs in this country, and I think Urbana can um, do well by developing Lincoln Avenue, where, which is zoned for industrial, and I think that could create some very good jobs for people to be able to support their families. Thank you. Ms. Pressing, what is the city's responsibility regarding social service funding and other social needs? Well, Urbana and Champaign historically provided money to individual social service agencies. And a few years ago, Champaign decided they were going to reduce the total amount, and they concentrated their spending on Garden Hills. Urbana decided that we wanted to keep funding these agencies, and we've been struggling to uh, calculate like how many Urbana people do they serve and what's the right proportion. But if Urbana contributes to an agency that's serving both cities, we're really, um, you, there's no way that you can split it up fairly. So we're working with Champaign to see if there's some way that we can support social service agencies because we know that that's very important for the quality of life in this city. And even though we can't do a large amount, we've managed to keep up uh, $300,000 a year even during the recession. And that money is used by the agencies to leverage other funding. So it was very important to them for us to keep funding, and I hope that we can get Champagne to join us. Thank you. I haven't done a lot of preparation on this question. However, I do believe that uh, Urbana has done a good job in funding uh, social agencies. and But in the future, due to what I see are severe budget restraints, I think that we will be giving these social agencies a, a much closer look. Uh, we would be uh, maybe having to um, pick and choose. I hate to say that, but uh, I think that we still, once again, need to protect our dollars, and our dollars are very important to the citizens of Urbana. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Stratton, do you favor restoring the position of chief administrative officer? If not, why? If yes, who would you consider appointing to the position? I absolutely believe that this city needs a chief administrative officer. Uh, we need a second set of eyes to watch contracts, to watch the budget, to watch uh, to develop uh, contacts with the businesses that want to come here. Uh, I believe that the restoration of the CAO would have prevented some of the situations that we're currently in now, such as the Urbana Landmark situation where this contract has been mismanaged. Uh, if, we, if we had a CAO, someone who had been able to keep his eyes on this contract, he would have been able to say, well, uh, we're looking at this contract. Maybe it's time to come in. We need to talk. The CAO it plays an extremely important part in being the liaison, liaison between the department heads and those, those elected officials. I'm sorry. You can, uh, when, when you come back around, if you want to finish your thought, you can finish it at that time. Well, I have a chief of staff. I hired a person and called it a chief of staff, so I think it's um, not really right to be quibbling over the title. And Urbana has, has performed very well since the um, most recent quote unquote chief of staff left. I, I did the job for almost two years and I think Mike Munson is doing an outstanding job. And I don't need a liaison between me and the department heads. I talk with the department heads. Every week, uh, I meet with the uh, problem properties group. We talk, um, the police chief, the fire chief, and public works director, and the head of the community development. So I do talk to department heads. And I don't need somebody in between me and the department heads. And um, 
I think the structure of government in Urbana is for the mayor to be the chief of operations. That is the law of Urbana. And um, I think my chief of staff works very well. Thank you, Ms. Prussing. Ms. Prussing, what do you, excuse me, what are your plans for downtown development? Please be specific. Well, currently in downtown, the latest project is the um, $750,000 to redo the buildings across from UC Bank. There's going to be a restaurant there. There's going to be um, space for uh, entrepreneurs and creative people. And that was done, the $750,000 private investment was generated with a $70,000 in public money to encourage it. Also, the um, beautification of the boneyard is going to draw new businesses to Urbana, and the existing businesses are very excited about that. So um, we have a continuing program that has been very successful on bringing new businesses downtown. And Lincoln Square, for example, has more businesses than it has had for many years. I don't know if there's any vacancies left at Lincoln Square, but um, Common Ground Food Co-op, um, we leveraged a very small amount of public money, and they just expanded faster than any other co-op in the country Thank and you. just spent $2.5 million Thank on expanding. Thank you, Ken. Mr. Completing Stratton. my thought on the CAO, uh, since we have had a CAO, um, we have not drawn any capital development in Urbana, no major development. You can look across the, you can look across Wright Street and you see all sorts of capital development, but we don't have any because of, we don't have a CAO. We don't have anybody to attract that kind of business. And your question was again. Sure. What are your plans for downtown development? Please be specific. I want to see the Goodyear lot developed. This, uh, there's been a plan for that for years, but uh, apparently the developer didn't have any money. But let's put out a new RFP on that. Let's go to the uh, Timponi lot. That's right in the middle. Uh, that's right next to, adjacent to a, a current business that's already uh, needing space. Uh, let's go to the Denny's lot. Uh, the city's invested money in the Denny's lot, and the Denny's lot should be ready to, ready to roll but apparently there's a problem. Thank you. Mr. Stratton, the city budget frequently compares Urbana to Champaign in regards to tax, taxes, tax rates, et cetera. Why should Urbana be a second city? Urbana should never be a second city. Urbana should be <laughs> and Banner should be the crown jewel of Champaign County. They were first. However, because of the way our, we handle things right now, we are bridging the gaps in our budget with additional taxes, additional fees, things that uh, should have been made up for with uh, economic development in the early years of the current administration. We need to make sure that right now we get off, we get off the ground running. We need to make sure that when we get started that we get the economic development here. We need to make sure that the important issues such as the downtown fill in the spaces that needs to get done. Thank you. Ms. Pressing? Well, I think it's logical for the cities to compare themselves. We're two little laboratories of democracy, and Champaign learns from us on issues, and we learn from them. Whenever I have a problem, I always say, what's Champagne doing? And we talk to each other. We cooperate very well. Um, I don't think Urbana is second to Champagne. We're smaller than Champagne, but we bring a lot of businesses uh, into Urbana that leave Champagne and decide they want to locate in Urbana. And Mr. Stratton's statement that we haven't had any investment in Urbana uh, is simply false. We've had millions of dollars invested in Urbana. And um, that was during a recession. So I think we're doing remarkably well. We've tried to keep our property tax rates the same as Champaign because we're in competition with Champaign. Uh, we have a lot of cooperation, but we're also in competition. 
I like to think of it as uh, sibling rivalry, but um, we are competing with them on businesses in many instances. But there are plenty of businesses that, d that decide they want to be in Urbana. Thank you. Thanks. Ms. Pressing, what in what is your opinion of the city's withdrawal from the Convention and Visitors Bureau? Well, it's something that was talked about in Urbana for about 30 years. Uh, I think it was very highly questionable, and many city council members over the years uh, questioned it. Uh, when we had um, the big effects of the recession, uh, my top priority is public safety, and I needed to hire a police officer, and so the way I found the money was by um, eliminating the payment to the Convention and Visitors Bureau. It seems to have worked very well because our hotel motel taxes increased 35 percent the year after we stopped having the Convention and Visitors Bureau, so it didn't have a negative effect. Uh, and I think if you're going to measure the effect of tourism, the best way to do it is with a uh, hotel motel tax because those are the people that are coming into the city to visit. So um, we have a marketing person now, uh, but in the meantime, for a whole year, the hotels seem to do very well without Urbana uh, paying for that bureau. Thank you. Mr. Stratton? Having spoken with the Tourist Bureau, um, their opinion is slightly different. One of the things that they do is they book things two to three years in advance. All large conventions are booked two to three years in advance. So therefore, if we got a lot of hotel motel tax last year due to, it's all due to the fact that some of the conventions that they booked previously were just showing up. However, uh, we now have the Landmark Hotel, which is not getting any, any referrals from the uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau, and the Blues, Brews, and Barbecue, which left Urbana because we aren't, well, essentially, there's, a, there's, there's, well, yes, the Urbana, they, blew, they left Urbana and they are using the Tourist Bureau to attract people to Champaign. There's the Corvette Convention that's going to go on in Champaign, and that's all due to the fact that we aren't participating with the Tourist Bureau. We need to get back to the place where we're promoting our business businesses in every way that we can. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Stratton. You have suggested cutting the fire department budget in order to pay for more police officers, excuse me, pay for four more police officers for Southeast Urbana. Is this a good idea or not? And please explain. I believe that this is a, well, the fire department is a 24-hour organization, and to come up with $380,000 in overtime on a 24-hour organization, uh, I would be critical of how it's being used. However, uh, if we were to cap, their, cap them at the same spot that the current police department is using for overtime, then we would be able to provide additional police officers. And I think that the people in Southeast Urbana would be very thankful for it because I believe that we can solve that crime problem with additional police officers and community policing. Thank you. Ms. Presley? Um, if we cut the overtime in the fire department, we wouldn't be able to have three firefighters on every truck. Overtime is needed to maintain that. and. It costs less than hiring additional firefighters. They are, the overtime is used to cover absences for sick days, injuries, vacations, and training. And cutting the overtime would not only violate our contract with the union, but would leave only two firefighters on each truck. And cutting the overtime for fire is not going to help hire four new police officers because each new officer would cost $100,000. And... Um, It'd be nice to be able to hire more police, but our police department is doing well now, and as we get more money, we can hire more police. 
but they've gotten extreme cooperation from the University of Illinois and the Sheriff's Department when they needed extra help, and that was at no charge to the city of Urbana. So I think it's wrong to pit the fire department and the police department against each other. Thank you. Ms. Prussing, what do you hope to accomplish as mayor in the next four years? Well, I would like to see us uh, continue attracting new businesses to Urbana. I'd like to see the completion of the Boneyard Project. And um, I would like to see us get a, a good cooperation with Champaign and the university on expanding early childhood education and housing for people and creating more jobs. And I think all those things um, are necessary for us to thrive as a community. And uh, we will continue the work on reducing crime by driving people out who can't manage property. Um, a bad landlord can just drive down property values for everybody around there. And I think we've seen that happen in the Learman Avenue uh, area, and we've seen it happen on Silver and Vauder Street, and that's why um, we've taken the pains to get these people to court and uh, try to get somebody else to take over the property and run it properly. Thank you. Mr. Stratton? I want to coin a word here. Sustainable environment, uh, sustainable investments, that's what Urbana needs. Sustainable investments. Investments in things that we know we're going to get our money back. If we take and we spend the $5 million currently being spent on the Boneyard project and it doesn't attract anybody, we're just out $5 million. However, if we take that same money and we apply it to the other open areas in the city, uh, we have a much better opportunity at attracting a business. Uh, I know that most of you are aware how the Schnooks development was done. It was done where the city did a cleanup and uh, a utility movement in order to, to leverage the monies that were spent there. We invested a million or so and in the Schnooks lot, and we, here we have a, a nearly a $10 million investment now, and it's paying its dividend. Thank you, Mr. Stratton. Again, Mr. Stratton. Should the city be spending millions of dollars on Olympian Drive when local streets are crumbling? Olympian Drive. Olympian Drive is currently, uh, by the mayor's specs, uh, 900 feet outside of the city limits. We're, we're, we're building on a road that is not even currently in the city. As it is, it is only a pipeline to Champaign, and we have almost no development in that area. Uh, there's, it's almost strictly agricultural. Uh, if you take a drive up there someday and take a look, and you see farmland for as far as you can see, you realize that this may be a time. There may be a this may this is a development, but its time hasn't come. We need to make sure that when we do these type of developments, even if there is federal money involved, that we do them in a, in a timely fashion when we, it doesn't affect our budget. Thank you. Uh, the Olympian Drive is not taking any local tax money. It is totally financed by state and federal money. And we've recently learned that the cost is going down to $13 million. The point of it is to connect with Lincoln Avenue, which is zoned industrial, and to say that it's a pipeline to Champaign uh, reveals a lack of understanding of what roads are. This is not a one-way street. It's a two-way street. And Champaign, by developing Olympian Drive, has had huge business development. And we expect the businesses on Olympian Drive in Urbana and on Lincoln Avenue in Urbana to have the same results. We have businesses already there, and there's room for more businesses, and this is where we have the best chance of creating good, high-paying jobs. So it is 
you, you cannot develop a road at the last minute. These roads take decades of planning, and this road has been 20 years in the making. There have been many public hearings on it. And thank, thank you, candidate. You can. That's uh, why we're doing it. Yeah, you can finish your thought. Uh, okay. Next question. Actually, you have the next question. Okay. The federal and state governments have built a $30 million high-speed fiber, fiber optic network backbone. What is your vision for how that will transform this city? Well, we were very fortunate to get this huge uh, federal grant, and the University of Illinois was one of the early pioneers in computers, and this is going to make high-speed data processing much uh, more accessible to everybody. We've um, done the first part of it, which is install the, the big rings, and we're also uh, connecting the homes in the low-income target areas so that we can bridge the what's called the digital divide. So the next step would be to try to get it to the entire city. And this is something that companies look for when they're trying to find a location. Um, uh, this broadband project is going to make us very competitive, and I think we've received very good um, ratings nationally for the progress on this project. Thank you. Mr. Stratton? I would like to back up just a little bit and let's reference. Here in the 2012 Capital Improvement Project List, we show $835,000 going to Olympian Drive. That's not money, apparently. But uh, we also show another 835000 going to Lincoln Avenue connection to Olympian Drive. But I'm mistaken, obviously, that these numbers don't mean anything. Uh, as far as uh, I see the fiber optic <coughs> project, Yes. Did you need me to repeat yes, the question? Yes, please, if you could sure. very quickly. The federal and state governments have built a $30 million high-speed fiber, fiber optic network backbone. What is your vision for how that will transform the city? The cyber network is obviously the, the wave of the future, and Urbana's got a chance to get on that train early. I think that we need to take, make the best of this opportunity by uh, helping develop those type of companies and inviting those type of companies to come to Urbana because that's, the, that's where the money is. Thank you, Mr. Stratton. Mr. Stratton, what is your position on the improvement of South Philo Road serving the Pines, Deerfield Trails, and South Ridge? Does it contribute to sprawl? It doesn't contribute to sprawl, but it does contribute to the fact that we have other streets that are, seem to be more of an urgent matter. We have uh, Florida Avenue between Race and Lincoln, uh, which they patch almost daily. Uh, we have Vine Street from the viaduct to uh, Main Street, which they patch at least weekly. We have Green Street between uh, between uh, Race and Lincoln, uh, it looks like a, a patchwork quilt. These are the, we need to address our current crumbling streets and put our monies where we drive every day. I do not contribute the South Philo project to, to urban sprawl, but I do attribute the fact that its need is not necessarily now. Okay, thank you. Well, we, we did um, that piece of road because of all the homes that are located there, and it was not, the road was not up to city standards, and we're getting help from the county to, to fund this. It's, it's kind of in a roundabout way at this point, but they are helping us. So I think that when you move into the city, um, the land is annexed, that you have to have decent streets, and um, we have a plan for addressing all the streets, and we're going to be spending $9 million, which is $5 million more than last year. 
So I think we're making a very good effort to repair the streets, but we went through periods where we just didn't have the money. We had to wait for money to do uh, Windsor Road, and we were the first project in the state of Illinois when President Obama got the, um, the um, assistance during the recession. So we were the first project because we were all set and ready to go. So we have a very carefully planned out um, plan for each of the roads, and we try to maintain them. Thank you. Ms. Pressing, uh, this question is a, a little long, so please bear with me. It's a little commentary prior to the question. Parking lots can be a great convenience for shopping downtown, but recent urban planning studies state that they create harmful, vacant spaces in the downtown urban environment, which would be better used for commercial development infill. Do you think there needs to be a rethinking of Urbana's downtown open spaces to reduce dead spots in the urban landscape created by vast parking lots which stand empty on weekends? Well, certainly the parking lot across from here does not stand empty on weekends when we have um, the farmer's market. But there, there is a change. Uh, Urbana has reduced the number of parking spaces that are required. And um, anything that you do that changes parking is going to create a big public um, dissension. There are a lot of people that really want the parking spaces. If you try to change something, they don't like it. But um, we do try to reduce um, the number that are required for an apartment, for example. It's not what it used to be. So we're aware of that. Thank you. Mr. Stratton? I think that one of the things was, we, yes, we should probably reduce the dead spaces. We should probably look at parking lots, parking decks. We have a parking deck uh, that was supposedly capable of expansion a few years ago. Maybe we should make better use of those kind of facilities. Uh, I think that uh, those type of facilities uh, are, are, are set up to take cars and use up less space. So uh, if the situation comes up that uh, we would have a, a, a venture into uh, some economic venture that wanted a, a parking lot, I think that we would look at how we could do that for them. Thank you. Mr. Stratton. We have heard a lot about the Landmark Hotel project. Mr. Stratton, what would you have done differently? And Mayor Prussing, why do you think the city is doing the right thing? The Urbana Landmark project, it's, uh, it's been managed improperly. The current administration has overlooked the fact that Mr. Juan, uh, the proprietor, uh, was not ready years ago. And when he presented his plan for uh, his construction plan, which was merely more than a shopping list at the time, this should have been a complete plan. They should have sent him back to the table to get a proper construction plan. If he had the con proper construction plan and a proper construction timetable, we would not be in the situation that we are now with 45 rooms of 128 available with no restaurant, no, uh, no convention center. These are the kind of things that we were promised in the original agreement. There were ways to hold him to the original agreement. Thank you. Well, the 45 rooms are filled tonight, and um, the Landmark Hotel is booked through, or off through all of April and May, and um, the project was never supposed to be done all at one fell swoop. It was always going to be done in, in phases, and he is not out of compliance with the agreement. When he ran into problems, we uh, amended the agreement. So I think it's wrong to take a man who is investing $2 million in Urbana 
and browbeat him and tell him he's a failure when he took on a very tough project and the hotel is beautiful and he's doing it in phases. He's going to open more rooms this year and other projects like the Gateway Project, uh, when businessmen run into problems because of a recession, uh, we work with them. If somebody comes with to, and wants to revive a hotel and spend $2 million of their own money, I think we work with them. We don't try to make them feel like they're a failure when they're doing the best they can. Thank you. Mr. Pressing. Ms. Pressing, how can businesses develop along the Boneyard Creek when the flood area will not change and building in the flood zone is not allowed by law? Well, it's my understanding that um, there is land along the banks that, I mean, that, that we've had businesses there before. The um, Denny's Dry Cleaners, which was demolished, that was near on the banks of the Boneyard. So I think there are spaces. We know the spaces that are available. The um, school district has a building there, so there, there is space. And um, I think it's worked in other cities. I don't the engineers don't tell us that there's no possibility to build there. This is, thing has been very carefully studied by people who know what they're doing. So I don't think it's, it's right whoever makes the statement that we can't build there. Thank you. Mr. Stratton? Well, as far as I know, Illinois law still says you can't build in the floodplain. However, uh, the, I can't see attracting businesses uh, it's, it's not, uh, we shouldn't be in a position to attract businesses. We should have already talked to them. We should have had the businesses on board before we start a $5 million project. It's $5 million of your money. And if we're going to be working with your money, then I need some guarantees. I need to make sure that if I'm going to be spending your money, that I've got some businesses that are willing to try and help develop along those lines. I need the cooperation of the business people in order to make these kind of projects work. Uh, five million dollars is still five million dollars and if we're going to spend it then we need to make sure that we're going to get an, a return on our investment and right now we have no guarantees. Thank you Mr. Stratton. Mr. Stratton, how do you see the relationship between the mayor and the city council? Two-part question and what is your role and responsibility in this? I anticipate that, well, I've, I've got a long history of working with people. I was in the Public Works Department, and I was the guy that took the complaints. I was the guy that dealt with the unruly citizens. I was the guy that was willing to talk to anybody, no matter what the situation. And I feel the same with the council. Uh, I believe that our council is uh, is a good council, but uh, and I, I I do realize that some of these people will be supporting the mayor. Uh, I have our were mayor supporters if I am elected, and at that in that t at that time, like I said, you don't want everybody to agree with you. In order to get the best out of something, you need to have some dissent. You need to have you need to see both sides of the argument. If everybody agrees with you, then there's obviously a side of the argument that hasn't been looked at. You need to have dissent. Dissent is good for. Thank you. Ms. Preston? Well, for the 28 years before I became mayor, there was a very bad relationship between the mayor and the council. And um, I was able to change that. And I think that's the biggest thing I've done is be able to have a healthy working relationship with the city council. And um, we don't start out agreeing. What we do is discuss things and invite the pub public to give their opinions and ask their questions. And sometimes it takes us a long time, but we end up with a much better ordinance or a much better uh, system that we're going to adopt because we do take the time to ask the good questions. And the people on the council uh, treat each other with respect. Uh, we don't think we have to agree, but we think we need to be courteous, and people do listen, and they learn from each other. And I think Urbana is a very good example of how 
a democracy can work. Thank you. This will be the final question prior to your closing statements. Ms. Prossing, what changes can be made to facilitate bicycle safety and use in Urbana? Well, we have a bicycle and pedestrian advisory committee, and they've set out, after a great deal of study, a proposed plan and we have um, state money that's helped us with that. There's a big push to, I mean, bicyclists have a right to use the roads, and we want them to use them safely. And as it turns out, the more bicyclists that there are, the safer it is, because then drivers start seeing bicyclists, whereas there, if there are very few bicyclists, sometimes uh, drivers are just looking for other cars, and they don't even see another kind of vehicle. So. Um, we have a careful plan that we're implementing, and um, it takes education, and we have to educate bicyclists as well as drivers, make sure that bicyclists follow the law, and that's what we try to do. Thank you. Mr. Stratton? I, we're, we have a growing bicyclist population in Urbana, and we, we have some situations which need to be addressed. Uh, first that comes to mind is, uh, Main and uh, Main and Vine on the north northeast corner. That's something that needs to be addressed. Something that should have been looked at a number of years ago. Uh, it's a dangerous situation. However, uh, one of the things that I would be looking at would be to eliminate a lot of the dotted situation that we have now. I want to make sure that the bicycle paths, when we put a new one in, it should connect to something that's already existing. Uh, we don't want to have a, a bicycle path to nowhere. Uh, we need to make sure that when we put in a bicycle path that it, get, it actually takes you somewhere and it's connected to the, to, it's connected to the system. So that's, it's, we, that's what we need. <laughs> Thank you. At this time, we will entertain closing statements from um, Ms. Prussing and uh, Mr. Stratton, and we will begin with Ms. Prussing. And you, they have two minutes each. Who is the best choice to head a government? It helps to know what training and experience someone has and how they perform under difficult circumstances. I've been mayor of Urbana for eight years. During that time, I've demonstrated a respect for individuals and the democratic process. The ability to work with the city council and the public in discussing the best course of action for the city. We have come through some very tough times. We have dealt with all our problems in an open, honest way, and the city of Urbana has continued to move forward despite the challenges. My background as an economist, county board member, county auditor, and state, legislature, state legislator gives me the ability to tackle tough times and keep working out good solutions. My greatest accomplishment, as I said, was helping establish a healthy working relationship with the city council. Urbana has a great city council and an excellent staff. We manage your tax dollars wisely. We plan for the future. We are committed to fairness and respect for all people. We are committed to creating jobs for families and dealing with the issues of poverty and crime. I appreciate the faith Urbana voters put in me by electing me mayor. The work can be difficult, but as any mayor will tell you, we like the job because we can actually get things done. That is what voters want. Reasonable discussion, people who represent them asking good questions and figuring out the options before making a decision. If you can find a city with a better government than Urbana, I would like to know about it. In the meantime, we have an election coming up on February 26th. Let's keep Urbana moving forward. I would very much appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pressing. Mr. Stratton? The policies of the current administration have seriously depleted the city's reserve funds. Eight years ago, the general reserves and the economic development funds totaled $2.5 million. This year's budget shows both funds with a negative balance. In addition, the mayor's budget message 
informs us that our current deficit is being bridged by one million in building permits and a one-time transfer from city insurance fund reserve fund. With the reduction, the insurance reserve fund is one million less than it was eight years ago. So there is a clear choice for Urbana voters in this election. If you want to see a continuation of failed financial policies, if you want to see a continuation of mismanagement of the Landmark Hotel, if you want to see a continuation of wasteful spending on economic development funds, if you want to see a continuation of policies that promote urban sprawl, then, prom that, then vote for my opponent. But my vision for Urbana's future is different. I have an economic development plan that will use taxpayers' do dollars more effectively. Expand when First, I will work with existing businesses to help them to be successful and I'll help them to expand when they're ready. Eighty percent of economic development can come from existing businesses. Second, I will use the city's development funds to leverage private investment. In that way, the power of our funding can be magnified many times. Third, I will aggressively market the many vacant lots throughout Urbana. The downtown market study has already identified four areas that are prime development sites. Fourth, I will hire a professional city administrator, as the code calls for, who will be able to help lead the city's development effort. My plan for spending the funding for street improvement calls for repairing the roads that we drive on every day rather than spending millions of dollars on a road that is completely outside the city limits. My plan for public safety calls for a renewed commitment to crime problem in Philo Road area. I know I'm laying out an ambitious agenda for Urbana, but with your help, we can get it done. I'd appreciate your vote on the election on February 26th. Thank you. This concludes this portion of the forum. Can we show a token of our appreciation to both uh, Ms. Uh, Mayor Pressing and Mr. Stratton? We will have a uh, short intermission as we transition to the uh, form, uh, the portion of the form that is dedicated to the clerk. At this time, we are asking for questions from the audience. Thank you for thank you so much for joining us this evening. This portion of the forum will be devoted to the candidates for Urbana City Clerk. The candidates are Michael Gatchi and Phyllis Clark. Each candidate will be given two minutes for an opening statement. I will then ask questions submitted by the audience and candidates will each have one minute to answer these questions. At the end, each candidate will have two minutes for closing, for a closing, excuse me, statement. For you in our audience, there are people distributing and collecting cards for your questions. Shall we begin by an earlier draw? Mr. Gatchi will begin. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Mike Gatchi, and I have been a resident of Urbana for 53 years. For the last 35 years in the construction business, I have brought forth a hard work effort and it's now time for me to get back to Urbana by running for the position of city clerk. I bring to the table by giving the voters a choice, a choice and an option for change. The change that I would like to take a look at in the city clerk's office is a flexibility beyond the eight to five business hours. In the construction business, I am used to starting early and working late, if need be, to accomplish any task or work project that is set before us. Secondly, I, like many others, do not believe do not believe in career politicians. I do believe in term limits. So if I am elected, and I'm fortunate enough to be elected to a second term, I promise to you that I will not run for more than two terms. 
as long as the city is in a financial crisis, the roads are in disrepair, and social services need our support, I will not accept any pay raise in my second term. And I promise to you, as a candidate, and if elected as city clerk, that I will give the voters 110% of my time and effort. My door will always be open, my phone will always be on, and I hope to make the city clerk's office the best that it has ever been. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gatchi. Ms. Clark? Good evening. I'm is Phyllis your, Clark. Is your mic up? Yeah, no. it is. I'm Phyllis Clark, your city clerk. I am the wife of 43 years to Lee Clark, the mother of three adult children, and the proud grandmother of seven perfectly wonderful grandchildren. I am a member at Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church where I serve as a trustee and chair of the Culinary Committee. In my role as your city clerk, I have represented the city of Urbana proudly throughout the state. As a member of the Municipal Clerks of Illinois, I have had the honor of serving as District 6 Director, Secretary, Vice President, and two terms as President. I am also a member of the Central Illinois Municipal Clerks Organization, where I have served also as Secretary, Vice President, and elected twice as President. In my achievements, I received the designation of Certified Municipal Clerk in 1999 from the International Institute of Municipal Clerks. I've received certification of professional supervision from the University of Illinois in 2003, the President's Award for Distinguished Service from the Central Illinois Municipal Clerks Organization in 2004 and 2005, and in 2006, I had the distinct privilege and honor of receiving the highest award given to a municipal clerk, and that is the Ilian Crable Member of the Year. In 2007, I was appointed the to the Municipal Clerks of Illinois Institute and Training Academy uh, by the governor of uh, Illinois at that time, which was uh, Governor Bl Blagojevich. Currently, I serve as a member of the Legislative Committee for the Municipal Clerks of Illinois. I am on the Bylaws Committee for the Central Illinois Municipal Clerks Organization. I serve as a presenter for the Municipal Clerks uh, Back to the Basics seminars. Thank you. We will begin the questions with Ms. Clark. Can you explain the job of city clerk and its chief responsibilities? The job of city clerk is records management. The chief responsibilities of the clerk's office is to maintain all of the ordinances, resolutions, agreements, and contracts that the city and the city council engages in from uh, businesses or organizations throughout the city. Um, our biggest thing is the FOIA requests. We have a lot of those, and we have domestic partnerships that we maintain all of those records. Thank you. Mr. Gatchi? I believe she got that right. <laughs> Mr. Gatchi, uh, we'll begin with you this time. What do you think are the two or three key qualifications necessary to fulfill the responsibilities of clerk? I think one of the main jobs of the clerk is to deal with the public. Being able to interact with them and provide them with the information that they might need through the FOIA and also being able to interact with other department heads within the city and providing them with the needed information that they might need for council meetings mm -hmm. as such. Thank you. Ms. Clark? When people call upon the city of Urbana, the first person that they get to is the city clerk's office. What we do there is we make sure that we have every bit of information that they need in place so that we can expedite their 
uh, information that they're wanting through this year's city as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of walk-ins that come in that need information and the first thing that we have to do is to make sure people are satisfied. Say for instance if there's something that's going on at another, they've been sent from one department to another, I make sure that the buck stops with me. I do everything that we can to make sure that the information the person is seeking is given to them at that time and they have to go no further than the city clerk's office. Thank you. Ms. Right. Thank you, Mr. Gatchy. What facilit Ms. Uh, Clark, excuse me, what facilitates a good working relationship between the city clerk and the office staff? Being able to understand that people are people first. Being able to uh, understand that people have problems no matter where they are. Uh, not getting out of out of pocket I'm going to say are upset over little things that might go wrong but work hand in hand with one another to see to it that whatever issue arises is satisfied uh, to the best ability of everybody involved. Thank you. Mr. Katchy? Working with employees I never ask anybody to do anything that I'm not willing to do myself. There are times that People have conflicts in their own life. And to have an understanding to respect that time that they might need uh, to work with them and treat them as equals. I feel that uh, even though if I would be the city clerk, we're all in it together. We all represent the citizens of Urbana and the voters. And to have a common ground of acceptance for each other, I believe would be important. Thank you, Mr. Gatchy. Mr. Gatchy, what plans do you have to diversify the workforce in the city? Well, I believe that there's uh, two assistants in the city clerk's office, and they are both women. One is African American. Mm -hmm. So to try to diversify that anymore might be kind of tough. So I'd probably just leave it the way it is. Thank you. Ms. Clark? There's not a whole lot of turnover in the clerk's office. Our office is pretty secure. When we get someone in there, they generally there to stay. However, I did have the opportunity just recently to uh, do a hire. And one of the things that I wanted to do was to make sure that uh, we were reaching out and touching as many uh, of the people in this diverse community as we could. So one of the criteria that I asked for uh, when I hired my uh, department secretary was that it would be someone who was bilingual and that's what we have. Uh, we have a fluently speaking Spanish uh, secretary in my office now that helps us with uh, you know the calls that we get from the non-English speaking community. Thank you. Ms. Clark, what will you seek to learn from other city clerks in the state? Well, I work very closely with all of the city clerks in the state. As I said, I've been president of the organization of more than 900 clerks uh, two years in a row. Uh, one of the things that we do is we collaborate a lot uh, on what it is that each other, that each municipality is doing, how our councils work, and things that we can do to help each other. Uh, we do parliamentary procedures. We do back to the basics where we're working together to teach all the other clerks, the new ones that's coming on, the things that they're going to run into on a daily basis and what they need to do to help smooth them way, their way through those things. That's what we do. Thank you. Mr. Katchy? 
The biggest thing is to learn from your mistakes. And so by talking to the other city clerks mm -hmm. and asking their experiences on certain issues would be uh, vital in understanding your own problems and questions that might arise as you do your, do your job as city clerk. Uh, there is a, uh, a web page that uh, the state has that you can seek information as well. And there's a phone number there that you can call and ask questions. So looking at other people's experiences would be key to making a successful clerk here in Urbana. Thank you. Mr. Gatchi, is the current computer system sufficient for accomplishing the job the clerk needs to do? If yes, explain why. If not, what would you propose? Well, I haven't had the opportunity to look at their computer system. Um, I know that if you have a problem with your computer, you can hit it with a hammer, and if that doesn't <laughs> fix it, then you have an electrical problem. <laughs> Of course, by then, I've already bought a new computer. But to answer that question, honestly, I'd be lying to you because I do not have that information as far as their computer system. Okay. Thank you for the levity. <laughs> Ms. Clark? Yes, the computer system that we have in place uh, is doing a very fine job. However, uh, being the city clerk, you need to understand what can be computerized and what cannot be. Uh, we have permanent records that require being held for eternity. And uh, to computerize some of those things would cause a lot of information on history to be lost eventually because technology changes so regular. However, uh, I have no complaints about the computer system that we have right now. Everything is working fine. And things that we can put on there, we do put on there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is a two-part question, Ms. Clark. Mm -hmm. What are the requirements for timely posting, postings of minutes of boards and commissions? And is it appropriate to post minutes of meetings which have not been reviewed, approved, and adopted by a subsequent meeting of the board or commission? You're, no. You cannot post minutes that have not yet been approved by the board, the council, commissions, because those are draft minutes. Draft minutes are not permanent. Minutes only that have been approved are the ones that can be posted, and you have 48 hours after approval to post those minutes. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Gatchi. It's almost like I'm looking over her shoulder taking a test. I think she has the right answer. <laughs> so I can't add anything to that. OK. Thank you. Mr. Gatchi, what city records can the public currently access online? Two-part question again. And is there need for improvement? Well, I believe most of the. Uh, city uh, meetings are online as well as most of the uh, budgets. Um, but then again, I don't have an answer for that. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Ms. Clark? Okay, would you repeat the question? Sure. What city records can the public currently access online, first part, and the second part is there need for improvement? The city, uh, the information that people can access online is anything that the city has, uh, that has come before them. Every piece of information is foyable. Uh, all the minutes, all the agendas, all the packet information, all of that is online. Budget, 
Uh, that kind of stuff is all online. Um, the only thing that could be approved or, or improved with that is that uh, if it was possible for us to do um, minutes and have them approved immediately, that's one of the questions that keep coming up. How soon can we get them? But hopefully that won't happen anyway soon. Thank you. Ms. Clark, how can you cut cost in your department? There's absolutely no way. <laughs> Simply because my budget is actually the smallest budget in the city. Everything is contractual except for uh, the clerk's education and everything else is, is contractual is through the city and there is no leverage for change there. Okay, thank you. Mr. Gatchi. Well, I haven't had the opportunity to look at the budget. Um, I don't believe everything is, is, is in indelible ink on paper. Um, I'll have to look at the budget and see what we could do to maybe cut our costs. But uh, other than that, I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Mr. Gatchi, could you please describe your history of interest and engagement in local government? Well, the last four years have been interesting with the election of our president. Uh, now, with Urbana, with the mayor's race, you need to keep close track of what's happening, especially when you're a taxpayer of Urbana. I've just now jumped into the political ploy after 35 years of the construction business. Um, and just to learn of the inner workings of how government works is something that I have taken part in and looked into. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Clark? When I was first elected in 1993, I was scared to death. I thought I was going to be bored out of my skull. However, I have found this to be extremely interesting. It is uh, unbelievable. I can't tell anyone how, in, how much of a, a thrill that you get being there when the council is talking back and forth. And sometimes you want to say, fight, fight, but they don't. There's a, it's, it's just a lot of fun. I'm wired up by the time I get home, cannot go directly to sleep because of all of the, the importance of the information that has been uh, discussed. I think it's a wonderful thing. Anyone who has the opportunity to uh, take on a political position, whether it's city council, city clerk, or mayor, should try it because I think you'll learn a lot. Thank you. Well, we, I think we saved the best question for last. This will be your last question, and um, you guys can um, let your imaginations go with this question. If, if you did not have any budget constraints, what changes would you make in the clerk's office, Ms. Clark? I would have them to put a vault in the clerk's office to store our permanent records to make sure that they are safe from here until eternity. As it is right now, everything is in a closet that is not fireproof, and I find that to be a little discerning, but that's the way it is right now. The city doesn't have any money to provide us with the proper kind of uh, storage that we need for these permanent records. If, if I had a budget that I could do anything with, I would take these chambers right here and turn it into my storage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Gatchi, Mr. Gatchi? Well, if we had an unlimited budget, I believe that uh, expending the hours of operation uh, the eight to, eight to five o'clock might be in conflict with some of those who have to work and might not be able to get off of work or lunch hour to come in and utilize the city clerk's office. So expanding our hours 
perhaps hiring more people would be one way to go. Thank you. And um, given that that was our final question, at this time we will entertain closing statements by both Mr. Gatchi and Ms. Clark, and we will begin with the closing um, statement from Mr. Gatchi. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters and the NAACP of Champaign County for this opportunity to sit here before you. I can only promise you that if elected, I will give you 110% of my time. And remember that you're not hiring a politician, you're, electing a po you're not electing a politician, you're hiring an employee. I work for the citizens of Urbana. As such, I will give you my undivided time and effort. And again, I hope to make the city clerk's job as good as it can be. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gatchy. Ms. Clark? Uh, first, I'd like to thank you for allowing us to share this time with you. If I am re-elected, the city clerk's office will continue to stay focused on providing the citizens of Urbana and those who come to our fair city with the utmost respect and dignity as they live and maneuver through our town. The staff in the clerk's office is also committed to this goal. The city of Urbana is a diverse community and as such, my staff and I are committed to addressing the individual needs of each person who come to our office. In addition to my individual qualifications, the staff in the clerk's office also bring impressive credentials, including bilingual skill sets. It is our goal to make processing through City Hall to be one that is as hassle-free as possible. We work very hard to answer each and every question or inquiry that a person may have, as well as providing them with accurate information. We pride ourselves in doing so expeditiously. It is our responsibility as public servants to continue to disseminate information and services to our community openly, honestly, and without partisan politics. We are here to work for and to serve you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Clark. At the Thank you again to the League of Women Voters, the NAACP of Champaign County, and to the City of Urbana. Special thanks to tonight's ushers, Chanesa Huff and Doretha Smith, who gathered the questions from the audience, the timers, Michelle Cooper and Ralph Trimble, who have kept us all on schedule. And the question sorters, Carolyn Trimble and Teresa Michelson. It was my pleasure to serve as your moderator. Please be safe as you travel to your ne next destination. Don't forget to cast your vote on February 26th. And good evening.